All right, guys. So we're going to start with how to find Naviance. Okay. So there's two ways for my kiddos um, of how you can find Naviance. Number one is you can go on to the Union High School website. Okay. Um, and um, from here, you would go to departments. Okay. You would find counseling department right here. And then on the side over here, you'll find Naviance. So if you click that link, it'll bring you to this page and you wanna click Naviance student, okay? Um, this link will bring you to the Union High School Naviance page. So if you just go through Naviance from Google, um, it'll bring you to the general page and you'll have to find our high school page, but this one will bring you right to our high school page. In addition, if you're on my Google Classroom, okay? If you click classwork on the side, you'll find Naviance right here. And then this link will also bring you to the Union High School Naviance page. All right. Um, so from here, you're going to log in. So you're going to hit student, obviously, because you're a student, and you'll log in with your email and password. So you, everybody here already has an account. So you should know your email and password. If you don't, uh, send me an email individually, um, and I can look that up for you or reset your password if you need. Okay, but if you remember your email, you can always use this forgot your password um, option also. So from here, I'm going to log in. Okay, and it'll bring me to my Naviance homepage. Uh, now this is saying Jane, I, I put Jane Doe. So this is just my, um, what's it called? This is just my uh, like demo page. So you guys will have a similar page, but with your name at the top. Okay. Um, I'll go over a few things and then I'll go over um, how to find the checklist. So at the top here, um, we've got our colleges home and we've got careers home. So before we even dive into colleges, let's talk about careers. So college isn't for everybody and we understand that. So one thing that you might want to look into is a career first. Or if you're trying to figure out what you want to major in, this might be a good uh, place to start too. So if you're like, I literally have no idea, which happens, okay? And I know I didn't know what I wanted to do um, until I was a junior in college, okay? So it might take some time. Um, you might start with one major in school and then change to another, and that's okay. As long as you're figuring out, you know, what you love to do, go for it, man. Um, so right here, college, uh, we go to careers, and then we go to explore careers, um, you can do the career cluster finder or the career interest profiler. And going through either one of those or both of these will really give you a good idea about what you're interested in and what um, jobs or majors will be in that area. Okay, so that's a great first step for some of you juniors or even for some of the seniors who um, still aren't sure what they wanna major in or what they wanna do. Okay, this might be a good first step. So let's go back to the homepage and let's find our college's homepage. All right. Um, from here, I'm actually going to take a step back and go on to the classroom. So from the classroom, this is going to be geared more towards my seniors. But for you juniors, this is a really great time for you to absorb the information. For, so when you hear it again and you have to take these steps next year, um, you'll know exactly what to do. OK, so from my classwork page for my seniors, this is not posted on the junior page, just on the senior page. Um, is the college application checklist. And I actually made this a, um, an assignment for all of you so that when we go to look at it, um, we can look at yours individually and see where you're at on the checklist. So first thing on the checklist is to narrow down your search between five and 10 colleges on the colleges I'm thinking about. Okay, so if we go back to Naviance, we go to colleges and we go to colleges I'm thinking about. That's this first one right here. I've started to build a list here of the colleges that I'm thinking about, all right? And a lot of you are like, Ms. Bose, I literally have no idea. I could go anywhere, I could do anything, I'm not sure. But we might wanna start, well, we definitely, especially for you seniors, need to start narrowing down your search between five and 10 schools, okay? Less than five schools, we kind of limit our options, meaning that um, you, know, you might have an opportunity at another school if we go underneath five, but if we go over 10, um, the application process begins to get very overwhelming. So I would say between five and 10 is a really good sweet spot. So how to find schools. Um, one tool I love to use is this thing called Supermatch. And how I explain it to my kids is 
It's basically like online shopping, but for colleges. Okay, so you can change any of the stipulations up here. You can search by location, um, what major they offer. Would you like a big school, a small school? How much it costs? Do you wanna play a sport? All of these things can be put in to see um, what these colleges offer. So one thing I like to start with is location. So a lot of students are saying, you know, I wanna stay close to home or maybe just stay in New Jersey. So what you can do is search by state and type in New Jersey. Let's see. New Jersey, okay. And that automatically gets put into our stipulations here and it says, look, I have 37 institutions that'll fit this score. Or let's say, um, kind of like me, I was like, I don't have to stay in New Jersey, but I want to be about like no more than three hours away from my family. So what I could have done was search by distance. So you would select miles. So let's say 125 miles from uh, Union and see what comes up. Um, awesome. So 256 in institutions now fit my, my, uh, my search of within 125 miles of, of where we live. Okay. Um, and that really opens it up a little bit more than just New Jersey. So we can go here, we can slide on down, um, and it'll give you a, a quick overview of the school. So Lincoln University, um, it fits my score, meaning 100% um, of what I've asked for is in here. Um, obviously, I only asked one thing, so it'll get smaller and smaller. The, that uh, fit score might get smaller and smaller, um, the more stipulations that you put in but it's a good place to kind of get an idea. Uh, this tells you what the average GPA, SAT, and ACT are, um, and whether or not they think it's an academic match for you. So for seniors, your GPA, SATs, and ACTs, if you've taken them and have reported them to us, they are already in here. And the computer will actually tell you whether or not they think it's a match for you, meaning that they think it's a target school. Um, for you juniors, you can just go off of what your current GPA is. A lot of you have asked me already. I've sent you your unofficial transcript. Um, anytime we send a transcript to you directly, it will be unofficial. Uh, the only time it will be official is if we, as the counselors, send it directly to an institution or to a job or something like that. That's the only time it will be official. Um, that means that you don't have access to it. There's no way that anyone could tamper with it, anything like that. Not that I don't trust you guys, I do, um, but that would be an official transcript, okay? So juniors, yours is not up here yet. Seniors, your, your, at least your GPA should be in there. Um, so if you wanna look more into a university, you wanna click on it, okay? And then at the top of the page here, it'll give you a quick overview, all right? So Lincoln University, um, I'm thinking about this school. I might wanna go here. So I'm gonna add it to the list of colleges that I'm thinking about. And how I'm gonna do that is click this little heart right here, okay? And that'll add it to my list. And I'll show you that in just a second. Um, here, we'll give you a quick overview of the school, how much it costs, graduation rate, acceptance rate, um, and some of the deadlines. And this will be um, important for the seniors, not so much for the juniors just yet. But another thing I want you to look at is also the admissions page, okay? So the admissions page um, will tell you about any of the students from Union High School who have applied to this school and whether or not they have gotten in based on their GPA and their SAT score. So a lot of schools are going test optional this year, which means that you do not have to submit an SAT or an ACT score, um, but that will be up to each uh, university individually, okay? Um, so if we look here, GPA, um, just adding another person. Okay, so GPA here, SAT here, and you can see where you kind of fall. Um, so this person was accepted with a 910 SAT and a 2.9 GPA. And this person was also accepted with a 1230 SAT and a 4.2728 GPA. All right, so this just gives you an idea of whether or not it might be an academic match for you. And if we scroll down, this has the application requirements. So right now the school says that it is still required to have the SAT. However, I would recommend going directly to the admissions website or sending admissions um, an email directly. One way to do that is if you go right to the top here, you see this button communicate. This will pull up um, an automated message where you can put the subject and say, um, uh, test optional, okay? And in the body, I was wondering if your university is test optional this year considering the circumstances of COVID-19. Please let me know. Thank you. Send them an email and they should get back to you, okay? 
So it's a really great way to put it, have it all in one place, how to communicate with the school, all right? So as we're building this list of colleges we're thinking about, and let's go back to that list, we start to build it here, all right? Um, sorry, I'm just adding another person. So we build this list and this gives us a really great um, modified view of all the schools that we're looking at. Um, let's go back to our checklist really quickly. And it'll say, we wanna narrow down our search between five and 10. Right now I have three and we'll just kind of go with it, but maybe I would add, um, you know, two more, five more, something like that. Um, Transcript release form. So juniors, don't worry about this yet. We'll do this when we when we do our junior meetings. Seniors, if you had a, a, a junior meeting with me last year, I already have your transcript release form. If um, I, if you did not have a meeting with me, then it has to be uh, filled out online. Um, and I have posted that on the classroom, okay? Um, start the application. So you wanna figure out, um, you know, when you start these applications, how do I submit them? Where is this coming from? So if we go back to our list of colleges we're thinking about, okay, we can see how the application must be sent in. If you see a blank screen like this or basically any other symbol, so sometimes there's like a stamp looking thing here um, or a blank computer screen, this means that you have to fill out that application directly with the institution. Um, these with the computer screen and it says CA, that means, um, common app or common application. So these two would both be for common app and this one would be for, uh, you would send that directly to the institution. Now what that means is you would go to Lincoln University, okay? Go to their homepage or admissions page, which you can find right at the top, right here next to their name, okay? It'll usually bring you here um, and you'll have to find either the admissions, let's see, admissions page, undergraduate programs. You wanna look for these buzzwords, you'll see them, um, and you wanna find something where it'll say apply now, okay? Um, let's see if we can find it, usually here, adult undergraduate, graduate, let's see if it'll say apply now somewhere. Apply, aha, we found it, okay? So you would, hit, you would start here and start that application directly with the institution on their website, all right? So those, that would be the difference between common app and non-common app schools. And you'll be able to view that list of what you need to do for which school right on this list of colleges that I'm thinking about. All right, so for the next step, um, write down all of your application due dates. So this is especially important for seniors now, okay? Juniors, you'll, th this is what you'll need to know for next year. So if we go back to that list of colleges I'm thinking about, you'll see where it says multiple deadlines. If you click the down arrow, it'll give you all of the deadlines that you need to know. So for this institution, regular decision is April 1st. Rolling decision is February 15th, okay? So you have a little bit of time to hand this in. Now let's look at Princeton. Um, November 1st is early action. So if you're thinking about um, doing Princeton, November 1st, that's coming up real soon. You need to make sure you have all of your information in for that. Regular decision, would be January 1st, okay? And that gives you a little bit more time to get your application materials together. Um, so again, you wanna write down all of your due dates and keep them all in one spot. Either put them on a Google Calendar or put them on one piece of paper where you can see them and put them in order of what is due when, okay? Colleges do not accept late applications. Um, your teacher might accept a late assignment, but colleges do not accept late applications. So believe me, there that is your first kind of um, foot in the door there. That's the, the first view that they get of you is, okay, this student just handed in a late application. No, thank you. All right. Um, so the next step would be move your colleges that you're thinking about to the colleges you're applying to. Okay. Um, and I'll show you really quickly, the step-by-step -step process is filled out right here, but I'll show you how to do that. So um, I'm just gonna do one for now, but I'm gonna do Lincoln University, and then I wanna move this to my application list. So I'm definitely gonna apply here. I'm already starting the application. I need to move that so that I can also request a transcript. So move to application list, okay? You're going to say which deadline you prefer. 
So for this is important for me to see when to send in your materials by and for your teachers who are also requesting letters of recommendation, which I'll go over to. Um, so I'm going to say uh, April 1st, that's when I'm going to hand in mine. Um, and I'm going to hand it in directly to the institution because they do not offer Common App. Um, I haven't sent in my application yet, so I have some time. And then I want to say add and request transcripts. This will bring us to the next page where you want to say initial transcript. Initial transcript is what you guys have in your possession for the most part right now, seniors. Um, this will include your freshman, sophomore, and junior year, uh, final year grades, as well as the, the names of the classes that you're currently taking. Okay, colleges do take that into consideration. So although they don't have your GPA and final grades from senior year, but they will see, okay, they're taking um, three honors classes. That's pretty good. That means that they're staying on that um, high academic rigor level. Uh, Mid-year, only some colleges require this. Um, this would be if you're, uh, maybe you were waitlisted, sometimes colleges re will request a mid-year transcript. Or if their due date is a little bit later, they like to get a mid-year transcript. Um, to see how you're doing so far, okay? And then the final transcript we will send once you have committed to a university um, or college, uh, we will send that once you guys have graduated, okay? And then you would hit request and finish, okay? That will give me an update um, that you have requested a um, transcript for this school, meaning that you have started the application or you're about to finish the application, all right? Um, you would hit submit, I just hit X because then it would actually send me a, um, an invite for that. And I'm not gonna do that for my demo. Next step, okay, letters of recommendation. So you want to request a letter of recommendation from your teachers first. Ask them, I know we're not in person right now, but send them a nice email and say, hi, you know, I really enjoyed your class last year. I was wondering if you'd be willing to write me a letter of recommendation. Um, teachers have the right to say no, so just be prepared for that. Not all, most of them will say yes um, if they have the time, but think about this, you're competing with, you have your seniors have about 550 something students in your class, you're competing with 550 other people, 500, you know, um, to, for that letter of recommendation. So you wanna do it early and you wanna do it now if you haven't done it yet, okay? Uh, we would recommend at least two teacher recommendations as well as a recommendation from me and that'll be a little different, but we'll go over that. So um, how to request a letter of recommendation through Navion. So first you've asked your teacher, they said, yes, I'd absolutely love to, awesome. The next step would be to request it through Navion. So if we go back to our homepage here, okay, um, let's actually go to the college's homepage. If we slide on down, you can find letters of recommendation under apply to colleges, okay? Letters of recommendation, you would hit add request. All right, you'll find your teacher's name in this list. Um, so let's say um, you want to ask Ms. Damo for a letter of recommendation, okay? The next step is you will hit all current and future colleges, okay? The reason is that if you pick choose specific colleges, um, this letter will only send to the ones that are already in your application list. Um, and then your teacher will have to go in and resubmit multiple letters of recommendation. If you click the first one, it'll be available for me to send on my end to all of the colleges for any of the ones that you are applying to, have applied to, or will apply to, okay? Uh, this third one, you don't really have to write much in here. Teachers will usually ask you to write out, a, uh, fill out a brag sheet for them um, so they can get, you know, information about how you were in their class or, you know, a little bit about your background. Here you can just write thank you so much or just a nice little personal note, like I really appreciate your time for writing this. Um, teachers will like that, okay? Um, when you finish all that, you're gonna hit submit request, okay? That'll give them a notifi notification on their end. It'll show them when your first letter of recommendation is due, which is when you um, say which um, application date you're applying for. Um, in addition, it'll send me an update that these are the teachers that still need to input their letter of recommendation so that I can send it out, okay? Um, like I said, a minimum of two teachers, um, and then I will have the third letter of recommendation, and that's mostly required. It's kind of like a, an academic history. I go over all of your um, academic history, you know, leadership experience, clubs, sports, extracurriculars, 
um, volunteer time. I put that all in there. And how you're going to tell me about that is by showing me your letter or filling out your letter of recommendation form. So if we come to my, my classroom again, letter of recommendation, this is a form, this is up here for seniors, juniors. I'm going to um, probably post that at the end of the year around June. So keep an eye out for that. Um, this letter of recommendation form goes into detail. Okay. Um, some questions that I really like to put in there. It does not have to be filled out in complete sentences or paragraphs or anything like that. Bullet points will do just fine. It actually is easier for me to read if it's bullet points, but I do want an explanation of some of the things. So if you're like, um, you know, I did community service with the Girl Scouts. Okay. Like, what did you do? Whoa. Where was this? What, who did you help for? How many hours did you do? Um, I want more detail so that I can put it into your letter of recommendation. So just saying like, you know, this person volunteered with the Girl Scouts rather than this person did over a hundred hours of community service with the Girl Scouts helping youth, um, I don't know, develop programs to help them read, something like that. You know what I mean? That sounds a lot better than um, something just as simple as they volunteered with the Girl Scouts. Okay. Um, once you're done with this, you're going to hit submit or turn in whatever is up on the top right usually for you guys. You're going to hit that and then I will get an update that you have submitted your request um, for me to write you a letter of recommendation. Now, for this, um, you need to give me and your teachers 15 school days in order to complete your letter of recommendation. So I have, I want to say 53 seniors this year. Um, so 53 letters of recommendation, I spend between an hour and two hours on every letter of recommendation. So please know that it takes a while. Um, and if you're asking me the night before, it will not be ready on time. So please, 15 school days, which is about three weeks, so fill it out now and you'll be good to go for um, November 1st-ish um, and anything that comes after that, okay? Sliding on down, um, that's how to request it from me. Hit turn in, lovely, and I'll set that up. Okay, SAT and ACT scores, um, those have to be sent directly to the university through either College Board or ACT. Um, it takes about two to three weeks for the colleges to receive it. So make sure you um, send those on your own. I do not send those. Those are sent directly from you. I know a lot of colleges, like I said, are test optional, uh, which means that you do not have to send in an SAT or ACT score. But um, if you do really well, it can only help your application. If not, then no harm, no foul. Um, they'll just take into consideration all the other things that I've talked about. Um, if you uh, do have a fee waiver, make sure that you are knowledgeable about that and use that to your advantage, okay? If you have free or reduced lunch, you are usually eligible for a fee waiver. Um, this will, for College Board, will be found directly on the College Board website. Um, so when you log into College Board on the top right, there should be a little yellow uh, sign, something saying about uh, fee waiver. Um, you would click on that to uh, get a free fee waiver for the SAT. ACT is different, you'll need a different fee waiver and that you can reach out to me about. And if you have a question about any of this, feel free to send me an email and we can follow up with either a Zoom or just kind of email to answer some of your questions. Once you've submitted your application, I want you to change your application status to submitted on Naviance. So once you go on Naviance, uh, colleges I'm applying to page, um, colleges I'm applying to, okay. Um, you're going to change your setting to submitted. So application, unknown, have you applied? Um, I have submitted my application and then you wanna save co your college application, okay? So I've submitted it and this will give me an update that um, you've submitted it and then I should go ahead and also submit my materials for you, all right? Um, I'm going to go over a little bit really quick, um, about, let's see. Oh, via common app. Okay. So another thing, so I showed you how to find, um, the application for, uh, directly to the institution, but, um, I didn't go over common app. So you can actually find the link right on your Naviance homepage. So if you go back to home and slide all the way down to the bottom, you'll see these links. Um, College Board is one of them for the, the SATs, but Common Application is another one of them, 
okay? I posted tons of resources on my Google Classroom. For those of you, um, there's a really good video that walks you through the most up-to-date college, um, or sorry, Common App. So if you don't have an account already, you're gonna have to create an account. Um, if you already created one, please do not create a second one. Please always log in. And if you forget your information, you can follow the steps on here to either for forgot username or forgot password to kind of get that information back. You never wanna uh, create a new one because then it'll, it's almost like fraud um, with you having two. Um, so definitely try to figure out what your, what your previous one was. And again, that is not going through Union High School, so I don't have your information on hand. If you have not set one up already, you have to create one now. Um, but if you already have one set up, again, I don't have that information. So I know a lot of you for Naviance are like, Ms. Bose, I forgot my password. I can reset Naviance. I cannot reset College Board, Common App, or ACT.org, okay? Um, so that's for Common App. Let me go back to my checklist and see if there's anything else. Um, we're gonna have more information about FAFSA, which is the financial aid, free application for student aid. Um, go on to my, uh, it opened October 1st. Yeah, so it's October 13th now, so it's open. You guys can start filling that out. We're, I think we're going to have um, parent night for that. Um, information on how to fill out the FAFSA, but there's also resources directly on my um, classroom. If we go to my classroom and we go to FAFSA here, there's a video, there's um, websites that'll help you fill that out. Okay, I should answer a lot of the questions. At first, it's a little scary when you first look at it, and parents definitely looking at it is a little bit scary, um, but once you get going, my mom had three of us, and by the time they, she got to my brother, she could do it in her sleep. Um, so that initial one will be a bit, little bit longer to fill out all of your general information, but as you get going, you'll have to um, apply every year that you go to a college. It'll be easier as you get going. Um, scholarships, okay. And then I'll go over application types. So really quick, while I'm still on Naviance, um, extend my session, let's see if it'll leave me in. Okay, cool. I have a lot of students who ask about scholarships. So it's never too early to start looking for scholarships, all right? So if we go to our college's homepage again, you scroll on down to scholarships and money. You wanna look at the scholarship list. And I'll say this, I'll be honest, most scholarships are geared directly towards seniors because they will be taking that next, next step into um, college. However, not all of them are geared only towards seniors. So if we look um, at eligibility here and we click 11th, there are about four already in here, um, four scholarships that, um, 11th graders can apply for okay so you guys can start now uh, but 12th grade you guys definitely have a lot more opportunity okay so one way to look is through naviance um let's say um we click on this one american indian graduate um center scholarship you can read the description really quickly to see if that fits you um or you can click directly on the website which is what um for any of them i i recommend that you click directly on the website and this will give you an either for even further description and how to apply and what you need to apply all of these things. Um, of course, it's not loading right now, but that's okay. Um, so just click on the website, it'll give you more information. And again, um, this really narrows it down. You can search by category if you feel like this is something that represents you or a keyword, um, but just really take a look through all of them. You, you, know, you could be surprised, you'd be like, oh, I didn't realize I would qualify for something like that. Um, really good information. There's also tons of um, websites out there with scholarship um, information, even a Google search or going through your parents' um, business or whatever kind of job that they do. Some businesses um, offer scholarships for their employees' children. So ask your parents about that too. Um, one thing I would say definitely be weary of is if you're applying for um, a scholarship and they ask you to put in a fee, or like pay for your application, I would not recommend doing that. That's typically a scam. Um, if it's a scholarship, they're giving you money, they're not taking money from you. Okay, so keep that in mind. If you have a question about one, you're like, Miss Bose, this seems a little fishy. Look, you know, send me an email, I'll look it up, I'll talk to the other counselors and see if anybody that they know have, uh, has uh, applied to this or gotten any money from it, okay? Um, and then really quickly, I just want to go over, I have about 10 minutes left, so sorry guys, I'm going to go really quickly over the different ways that you can apply to college. Um, college applications, let's see, info, I'm going to go over this 
early action versus early decision versus uh, regular decision. So early action, okay? Early actions means that you'll, you can apply early to that school. Those due dates for applications are usually a bit earlier. You apply early, you would get your response early, meaning whether or not you've gotten in, you get that earlier. And then you have until May 1st in order to make that decision of whether or not you want to attend that school. Okay, this for it was just a discussion point. This is from Vanderbilt Univers uh, University's website, so that's why it says Vanderbilt. Um, you have until May 1st, it is a non binding contract. Okay, early decision think about this decision, meaning that you're making your decision, right? Early decision means that you apply early to a school. If you get accepted into that school, um, you have to go there. It is a legally binding contract. You can only apply to one school through early decision. And if you are accepted, you have to attend that school and pay whatever fee uh, comes along with that. Okay. Legally binding. Um, and you would, you would get your application, uh, you would get your answer early though. Uh, so this is only for people who are dead set on, yes, I absolutely want to go to this school and I have the means or the money to pay for it. Okay. Um, regular decision would be what most people um, usually apply for. Those due dates are a little bit later than early action and early decision, typically. Um, but you would apply this way. Uh, you would get your answer a little bit later, um, but you still have until May 1st to make that decision. It is a non-binding contract. And then you'll also hear rolling decision. So these due dates are usually later than even regular decision. These due dates will usually be around June, July. Um, the way that this works is if you apply rolling decision and you submit your application before I do, then you get your answer before I do. And if you got the last spot in the, um, the program that I wanted to apply for, then I don't get that spot. Okay. So the earlier, the better for rolling decision. Okay. Um, so I believe that's it from my checklist. I'm going to come back to our screen. Let's see. Stop sharing. Um, and then I'm going to look in the chat and see, you got that question? Any questions, you can either put it in the chat or you can unmute and ask the question or you want to raise your hand or give a thumbs up or something and I can kind of call on you. Any questions? Anybody? I know that thorough, a lot of good stuff. Okay, um, Navion's login info. Um, email me directly if you have a question about your login information for Navion's and I can look it up individually. Um, I won't give it, you know, everybody your information out here. So just send me a direct email um, and we can, we can get that for you. Um, do we submit brag sheets when we send letter of recommendations? Requests. Um, so Keelan, um, so your teacher might ask for a brag sheet. They might have one themselves, but I wouldn't recommend using the same one that the counselors use. Um, so I wouldn't, the only thing is because we'd be writing about the same things. What, you, what teachers really should write about is how they, how you, you know, you were in their class and some things that you really brought to the class and their point of view of, of how you are as a student. Um, so teachers might recommend one, but I definitely, if you, um, in order for me to write you a letter of recommendation, you have to submit my brag sheet on my classroom. So your teachers might be different. I'm not sure if that answered your question. If not, you can send another chat. Um, how do we move a college from colleges I'm thinking about to colleges I'm applying to section? Um, so if you go to my college checklist, it actually gives you step-by-step -step how to do it. Um, but you're gonna click on it. You're gonna say, move to my application list. You're gonna go through and say what, um, what date you're applying for or what um, type of application you're sending. Um, and then you're gonna say whether or not it's through common app or regular. Then you'll go through, hit initial transcript, and then you can send that. And that will give me a notification that you've requested your transcript. And then we'll also move it from colleges you're thinking about to colleges you're applying to, okay? Uh, but just double check if you need a step-by-step, -step, it's all on the checklist, which is on my classroom. If we already have the junior meeting, there's no need to do the transcript form. Correct. Um, if we already have the junior meeting, you um, you can just check with me just to be sure to say, Ms. Bose, that I definitely give you my uh, transcript release form. Um, so the reason why we have that is there are things called FERPA laws, um, which uh, prohibit 
us from sharing educational information with anybody else without your permission. So, um, you know, we're not going to be sending your transcript willy nilly to everybody. Um, it's only the colleges that you tell me that you want to send them to. Um, so if you've most likely if you've had a junior meeting with me already, we have your um, transcript release form for any of you juniors. It's going to be probably virtual now, which I love. Um, so I don't like paper. It just I have like binders upon binders and we don't need all the paper. So um, Sophia, yeah, I can check for you when we're done. OK, what's the deadline for early action? So every school has a different deadline. OK, so that's why you want to really have your list in order and put it somewhere that's like glaring in your face every day when you wake up. Okay, this one has to be due by November 1st. Okay. Every, um, it could, usually it's around November 1st, November 15th, sometimes December 1st, but it's each individual college has their own due date. So please keep in mind that it's not all the same for every school. Do transcripts sent to colleges only include final grades and no grades from this school year? So we will send your initial transcript and yes, so it will only include the final grades from freshman, sophomore, and junior year, but it will show which classes you're currently taking. Now, that's why when we talk to junior year and uh, I talked to my sophomores, I know I just started last year, but talking to my sophomores and freshmen last year is every freshman, sophomore, junior year are super important for that GPA that we send out to schools and the class rank, okay? So your class rank and your GPA are connected where they basically are ranking the GPAs. Um, so they only include final year grades, yes, unless you ask for a mid-year transcript, in which case we'll give your kind of um, unofficial mid-year grades for those classes. Um, only some colleges um, ask for this, not everybody. Okay, I hope that answered your question too. Any other questions? Good stuff. All right. So I don't see anything else really coming up. So here's what I'm gonna do. Um, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to send me an email and we can either set up a Zoom uh, time to meet or we can, you know, I can just answer it over email if it's something simple. Um, really get started, you juniors out there. I know that this was all new to you. Um, seniors for the most part, you've heard me say this already, but kind of it's a really good step-by-step -step, um, evaluation. Juniors, start building that list of colleges you're thinking about. And then you can kind of narrow them down by the time you get to next year and you know right away when things will be due, um, where you're applying, how you're applying, all of these things will be second nature. Okay, so I'll give you guys two minutes to get to your next class. Thanks so much for coming. I'm ex excited. I had like 33 people. Um, yeah, you guys are, are free to go. Thanks for coming.